Hello, I'm Alan Avery, and this is Art Strokes. We're pleased to have with us today a very good painter, Mitzi Yader Fuller. Welcome to our program, Mitzi. Thank you, Alan. Mitzi, everybody has to travel a road, so to speak, from the beginning to the current, to the present. Uh, what sort of, of uh, training or background have you had in terms of learning your trade or your, your, your media or whatever it is that you want to call it? Well, I got a very early beginning because I was born left-handed and uh, my father was a very gifted artist as well as a prominent uh, physician and his mother was also and I guess I never had a choice. <laughs> And I've always wanted to do this, and I, my mother recognized my talent early and took me to rather progressive schools in Washington, mm. D.C., mm -hmm. uh, at the age of four. Mm. And uh, I've been painting ever since. So have you always been exposed to art? Yes. Uh -huh. uh, well, concerts yeah, and uh -huh. museums and right. living in Washington, it was easy. Mm -hmm. Uh, what about uh, college uh, or uh, training? Did you have any university training, any courses in yes, college? Yes, um, I went to the American University in Washington, mm -hmm. D.C., and uh, earned a degree in art education. I see. Uh, there were a lot of uh, very good artists at American University who taught classes there. Did you have any of those uh, uh, artists as a teacher? Yes, I had. Uh, Especially Ben Summerford. Yeah, he was very good. Mm -hmm. And uh, Darista. Mm -hmm. And um, those are the two I remember the best. Mm. Did Arista teach you uh, printmaking or was it no, uh, painting? No, uh, painting. I see. Yeah, he's uh, excellent. Wonderful artist, things, yeah. uh, lessons to mm -hmm. learn from. Uh, well, why don't we uh, take a look at uh, you in your workspace where you have uh, your place in, was it Bethesda or Chevy Chase? Bethesda. Uh, Bethesda, Maryland, Montgomery County. So why don't we, uh, you see, we see you at your easel there now. And uh, let's see, this is, well, of course, this painting, we didn't uh, see it in its very state, but that's the way you start your painting, isn't it? Very free. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes I draw thumb, thumbnail sketch, sketches, uh -huh. but uh, I, because if you're stuck with a bad composition, uh -huh. no amount of paint's going to make right. it good. Uh, but this got off to a pretty good start. I guess experience helps. Right. Yes, of and course. And I did finish it that day. Mm. Well, you're a quick painter. Uh, yeah, I throw yeah. it on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what's the term for that? Is it al fresco, or what, what is the term for that? Yes, I guess. <laughs> and so I like to paint from life. I, I don't I paint from photographs uh -huh. or memory very well. Right. I did it as a kid, but not mm -hmm. today. So, do you then? Uh, are you, you do most of your things in studio, right? But how um, about outside? No, outside on? a lot. I do Sorry. figures. I love to do figures. Uh -huh. I draw uh, the human figure very well. I, I see. had a lot of practice at American University. You do more drawing than anything else and that's what I teach my students. Uh -huh. And uh, I do think still is the backbone. Mm. Of course. Uh, uh, anyway. I do combine figures in a landscape. Mm -hmm. They're popular. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, do you have, still have opportunity to work uh, that you have, uh, you have models posed for you in any, any place? Yes, down at Glen Echo in the Yellow Barn that Walt uh -huh. Bar Bartman founded and is uh -huh. the director of. I've been painting there many, many, many years I see. before the Yellow Barn was even founded. Mm -hmm. That was four years ago. Right. Uh, so, so it's a good opportunity for people in the, the Montgomery County, Maryland, and D.C. area to go and, and have a place to work. Well, Glen Echo's a hot spot of creativity, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I take other courses there, too, just to try new things. I see. I just finished a fused glass course. Mm. Yeah, that can be a lot of fun to work with. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the, we're not going to be looking at any of that glass work, are we? We're going no, to be no, looking strictly I haven't, at painting. Uh, I've made books. I love pop-up books, and oh, I, I have see. made books. Uh -huh. uh, but I'm not a terribly artsy crafty. Mm -hmm. so I like the two-dimensional. In other words, your interest really 
is not uh, in crafts per se. You don't do ceramics, you no, don't do any of those I kinds of things. I wasn't fond of the wheel or chemistry much, uh -huh. although I've had to do it, of course. Mm -hmm. um, I have a passion for painting. Right. Uh, do you use uh, acrylics? Yes. Uh -huh. Oils are my first choice, but acrylics are more portable mm -hmm. and more practical because yeah. I don't usually paint at home unless I'm finishing up or snowbound. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I like to see something uh, that catches my eye. Right. Uh, otherwise, you don't have an interest in doing mm -hmm. it. Is, is it am I safe to say that you're a person who d uses spontaneity in your work? Yes, I like the word impression, I uh -huh. guess. And, um, mm -hmm. uh, it just seems to be intuitive. Right. Of course, the thing about uh, acrylics is it has a good side and a bad side. The good side That's is right. it dries so quickly for you, you can do glazing with acrylics that dry within hours. In oil painting, if you do a glaze, you've got to wait months for it to dry. Uh, they are drawbacks. Uh -huh. and uh, but there are advantages and disadvantages, as you say, to both. Of course. Um, these are acrylics lately, and this one here is an acrylic on a mat board. I've been uh -huh. fascinated with the uh, uh, drag of the brush on, mm -hmm. on archival mat board, which I started using because my um, mat board shop used uh -huh. to give me their leftovers. Oh, I see. Uh. And uh, of course now I have to frame them. It's not like a canvas, but I, I don't like to go back to canvas anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, my acrylics are looking a lot uh -huh. like oils. Sure. And I often finish them with oil pastels, mm -hmm. uh, crepas. This has some of that on there. Uh, it seems to tie mm -hmm. it together of with course. line. Oh, well, let's look at some of the things that you have done, that you have finished and uh, maybe we can talk about what we see. This was a series of, uh, of models that I did down at the Yellow Barn in mm -hmm. Glen Echo. Mm -hmm. And I did one a night this fall. I see. And uh, I only threw one away out of 16. Wow. And this one was juried into the members show this month down there, mm -hmm. uh, the Yellow Barn members, mm -hmm. and uh, it only took an hour or so, and I just needed a lot of successes mm -hmm. well, this fall. Well, of course, the, the, the thing about acrylics is that it can be handled like watercolor in thin uh, strokes, or it can be handled very heavy. And it can you can paint over it fast yes, if you don't like that's it. that's right, that's correct. Also, you can go from, uh, from thin to heavy. Uh, you can have a lot of underpainting, right. or you decide to go further with it, you Just can do it again, or do washes. it go over, yes. Uh, I do like the spontaneity, mm -hmm. because I feel if you labor, or be labor a painting, you don't get this, uh, it's not just an unfinished feeling, it's mm -hmm. a, a spontaneous feeling, and it's an impression that you don't need any more than that. Right. I feel, to convey uh, I, uh, an emotion or, or mm -hmm. a feeling. I like the narrative quality of, of right. painting. And I like um, the uh, brush strokes are very important to a painting. And the quality of the line and the brush work. Yes, you can, you can see that in your work. I mean, um, it, it, there's something exciting about the moment of brush touching right. the surface and, and not going back and reworking. Uh, you can see that. Well, it's the only medium really that is uh, frozen in time, mm -hmm. whereas uh, motion pictures and poetry or, or books are, are time limited, right. whereas you can always go back and look at a painting, and mm -hmm. I kind of like that idea. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And I'm a very visual person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the closest thing to that, I guess, is photography. Yes, and I do like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, photography is something that can, uh, you, can, you can say what you want about how wonderful uh, photographers are and the kinds of things they do. But, uh, some, you know, let's face it, a photographer can take a thousand 
uh, photographs before they get the thing that they want, or as a painter, just strictly one-on-one. -on -one. Well, they're manipulating more and being quite creative with photography yes. recently, and mm -hmm. computers have played a large part. Sure. Uh, so there's more creativity than, mm -hmm. well, Man Ray did a pretty good job of, yes. <laughs> of creating things mm -hmm. with uh, nothing. Right. And, uh, of course, there, in, uh, in this day and time, uh, people now are using computers to do artwork. And there's some controversy about them in terms of do they have lasting quality, you see. Uh, the same uh, thing about printmaking. Now now people are using computerized yeah. uh, uh, printmaking machines. I guess time will tell yes. as far as their um, longevity goes, right. as mm -hmm. far as fading and yes. deterioration. My son is a computer animator in Orlando, uh -huh. and um, he doesn't do still photo, you know, still artwork as right. such. But uh, that's a whole other art. But of it's very it creative. Mm -hmm. His mind never stops. Yes. And I was fascinated with uh, yeah. with his demos. But, but the hand never touches the work. Indirectly. Yes, indirectly. Whereas You're right. You're the right. artist with pen or pen, right. pen and ink, a brush, uh, a pencil. It's him and that surface. Well, it's all in your eye. Yes. Um, and I guess the brush is a tool mm -hmm. and the paint is a tool. Right. And um, um, I use watercolor, too. Mm -hmm. This is an oil. Right. Uh, but you've painted very thin washes with this oil. Yes. Yes. Again, it, it was probably a very, uh, maybe two sessions, uh -huh. and trying to combine t two or more figures of is course. a challenge, and yes. I always like a challenge, and uh, uh, students uh, mm -hmm. uh, from school uh, pose with their uh -huh. instruments, and I thought that, yeah. that was very beautiful. And when Ann and I were there at your place, mm -hmm. there was so much work in there, <laughs> you know, there was so much energy shown there. Uh, it was incredible. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, it, it, it makes me wonder, holy cow, you need a, where are you going to put all this stuff? Well, yeah. that's what my husband is worried about. <laughs> <laughs> I do sell, mm -hmm. but um, I guess I'm more interested in uh -huh. pr producing than selling. Of course. I have to get busy on that part. Yeah, it, I've there's had only many too much shows, time. Yeah. yeah, they do take time. Yeah, not, I've also sold uh, greeting cards to Borders Books, carried my cards for uh -huh. a long time, White mm -hmm. Flint, mm -hmm. and have had shows there and other places. Yeah, so that's course. the thing I've noticed about Borders Books is uh, they do give space to artists. Yes, they do. I'm very yeah. appreciative of Which that. is really very nice of them to do that. I don't that. know how many people uh -huh. look at them when they're a looking lot. for books. Believe me. I a lot look at that. I do. I yeah, know. of course. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's because there's a lot of uh, foot traffic there, and, and it's good exposure for artists. Right. And uh, you can look at a lot of places. Uh, you know, some of these people are getting a little smart about showing artists. Well, and, and uh, there are different venues now. Yeah. A lot of cafes and restaurants are, yes. are into that, and yes. I think it's a good thing. Right, because there's not enough galleries, nope. <laughs> not enough museums that have space for right. artists anymore. Or it's they want a, a, a very problem. high commission. Yes, of course. Which but, isn't yeah. worth putting your things in, maybe. Of course. Uh, but that's, that's the one thing, uh, one trade, uh, where uh, the, the galleries can take things on consignment and offer nothing in the front, so to speak. Yep. And it's only until you become enormously popular and famous that, uh, that they will accede to what you want. And not what they want. Well, that's why we we have arts management degrees mm -hmm. now, and uh, I I do have a certain business sense. Uh -huh. But a lot, I've heard a lot of bad stories too about of getting course. your art back. Oh yeah, there's plenty of that around. <laughs> what about this? Is this a self-portrait? No, these are all models down at. They Canada. are all models. Some uh -huh. bring their own costumes, and some don't have any clothes on, and others do. Uh -huh. uh, also, I, I like collage. There's paper in this. Oh. I couldn't get those uh, flowers to uh -huh. stand out in front of that model, and it drove me crazy. And the bouquet in her hand, the, in right. her fingers there is also 
uh, paper. Those are no. paper, but everything else is oil. So what did you do? Did you um, uh, tear the paper uh, and, and just lay the paper down and then paint it over it? I mean, how did you handle that? No, I, I tore it, glued it on, uh, decided if it worked or not, uh -huh. and then sometimes I'd come over it with paint or crepe uh -huh. yeah. whatever works. Right. Um, yeah, I, I've noticed um, uh, in, um, in my own experience and experience of a lot of places where I've been, that sometimes an artist will t take and tape a piece of paper up on and try a color there, and if they yeah. like it or, or they shape. don't like it, they'll pull that off right. and then go further with it. It's a good yeah. uh, tool. Yes, and also if you work with acrylics, acrylics are also binding in themselves. That's in right. That you can use the acrylic as not a glue. Only, yeah, it, it works just like a, a right. permanent surface thing. And uh, there's so many things you can do in terms of texture with acrylics, it's incredible. Well, um, I have a friend that I paint with who uses uh, sandpaper mm -hmm. with a uh, surface and also a palette mm -hmm. knife, and I'm not into palette knives much. Uh, here we have a drawing, don't we? Yes, a very sensitive drawing. Oh, I, right. um, that's won an award. Uh-huh, uh, very nice too. It was a young um, University of Maryland ballet student who uh -huh. posed for a group of us. Uh -huh. um, you can do hundreds of these and only get a few good ones, but I love contour work and lines and washes. And this is mm -hmm. representative of, of what course. I really adore. Mm -hmm. This was an oil oh, on paper again, mm -hmm. Dana Glen Echo on a picnic table. Uh -huh. Again, loose. Uh, I'm not a tight painter and a uh -huh. lot of people like photographic work, but I just... Well, there's, there's a place for everything. That's right. You know, everybody is, is and should be a somewhat different. Uh, you, you can take a hundred of the, the best, most representational artists and lay their work out in front of you. And even though they have the same subject, each piece is going to be different. It's amazing to yeah. see a class painting the same sure. subject and everyone is different and fascinating. Yeah. We see with our own experience and we see with different eyes. Right, it's, it's and a, different tastes mm -hmm. of people who look at them. Yeah, because we are the sum total of our experience. And I like happy paintings mm -hmm. too. And uh, I think there's enough sad things in the world. Mm -hmm. Most of my paintings represent to me gaiety and, mm -hmm. and uh, happy scenes. That's of wonderful. Peaceful things. Sure. Now Makes me happy to paint them and to look at them. Now, can you t let's look at this. Uh, this is a birthday. Uh, we set it up at school. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, a real cake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think we sprayed it. And uh, I wrapped up boxes and presents and we had paper mm -hmm. Uh, plates and things and I did a whole series of food we just had food that year all over the <laughs> uh, classroom and uh -huh. I had a show called food for thought down oh. at the gallery in Glen Echo That's that year mm -hmm. cakes and they're hanging in my kitchen some of them but I became uh, yeah. I, I found I could paint anything we had to we were invited the yellow barns artists were invited down to the Washington Zoo mm -hmm. uh, the first year they had their art. Uh, so, their, so they did animal type right. things. Right, and right. I was terrified because I'd never done animals uh -huh. uh, except my cat. And um, so I went a little early that year and found I can draw anything. Mm -hmm. And a little boy came by when I was demonstrating uh, with the giraffes mm -hmm. and he said, how did you get, there's a cat, mm -hmm. <laughs> how did you get, um, how did you draw those giraffes? And I said, very quickly. Mm. <laughs> because uh -huh. um, I also know that animals mm. will go back to the same spot. Ah. So if you wait long enough or look at another giraffe, you can, um, mm -hmm. and you have to set moving things yeah. in stone. Now That's your favorite. What is favorite. this? Is that your cat? No, that was my son's cat in Orlando. Uh -huh. That's one of the few I've done from photographs. Mm -hmm. It's very large. Yeah. And I it's I a watercolor. It. Uh, it is watercolor. Uh -huh. Isn't that interesting? Very nice. And that's a computer 
uh -huh. picture behind yeah. there that is my interpretation mm -hmm. of a loose, of course. Yeah, but the the, uh, the way you've handled the strokes, uh, you know, it's it's really interesting. There's black ink over the, the fur, too. Uh -huh. And this little guy That's here. That's a white line woodcut. Oh, it is? Uh, yes. So it's that's a, a woodcut uh, print that you did. Soft wood that you uh -huh. chisel out and right. put watercolor on it. Or oh, use watercolor for your ink. Yes, ah. and you only do a little at a time. Because of course, it dries very quickly. Very quickly. It yeah. absorbs into this pine. Uh -huh. Did you uh, print that by using a spoon on the back, or did you mm, print the press? I think I used, press? just, I just used my hand. Yeah, you did. Uh, you can use a spoon. Now, this wow. is a collage, all paper. Uh-huh. And I call it Calico Cat. Mm. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's all paper. I don't think uh -huh. there, there might be some other silver, gold right. uh, paint lines on there. But uh, I had a, a show at Borders Books called The Gallery of Cats. There were about 16 cat paintings. Mm. And uh, I have a cat, and I love cats, and there are cat lovers. Mm. Uh, this mm -hmm. was a, a student at school, and that's well, crayons. Or uh, which school are we talking about? Uh, Walt Whitman Walt High Whitman School. Walt Whitman High School, okay. Uh, under Walt Bartman. I've been there since, on and off since 1974 when I did my student teaching there. Uh -huh. And it's always inspiring to see this young talent. Right. And to see it grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's they the nice put thing me about teaching. I actually, I'm very envious of them. Nice. But I have to realize that I was also painting at 14. Oh. And... Uh, I didn't paint for 15 years in between. Is that right? And I was terrified when I went back. Uh -huh. But I found it, it's like mm -hmm. a, driving a bi riding a bicycle. Right. Once you fall off, you got to get back on. I started winning awards again. Mm. That's great. That encouraged me, oh, so cool. I kept painting. And I've been painting ever mm. since, 10 or 12 years now. This is rather nice, too. I never had painting in high school. You did not. And I went right into college and back then you didn't have to have SATs or or a big portfolio right. or, like the com competition is terrible today for my students mm. but um, I guess they thought well I'll give her a chance mm. <laughs> and I proved myself that's uh, summer for took me yes um people said why did you cut off your head you know literal people right but I wanted it that way I uh, see. it's a self-portrait mm -hmm. Uh, of course, my hands were busy, so. but I don't f think you need to show everything in the entirety to get your point across. Uh, this was oils. Mm. This mm. is a, war a little piece of a watercolor. It's a self-portrait with uh -huh. cats in it, uh -huh. and I did it in a mirror in my studio. Right. It's and I discovered the eyes mm. follow you. It's a yeah. whole different thing doing self-portraits, isn't it? Quite. Uh, I've only got a couple that look like me. I'm yeah. not a portrait painter. Uh -huh. But I'm, I'm, at school we've done a lot of students' faces, and uh. I've hit it pretty well. I see. So, it, it, it's, it, you know, uh, self-portraits for artists, uh, it's rather interesting how people portray themselves over the centuries as well as currently. Not just the face either, they put themselves in settings and mm -hmm. there was a wonderful show at the uh, American Museum of Art. Uh, National, Gallery, Amer National yes. Museum of American Art right. in, in D.C. Right, uh, uh -huh. a few years ago of, of a man who's collected self-portraits and they're all just fascinating That's to me. That's wonderful, yeah. Uh, some were very angst and others were uh, mm -hmm just their face, but most of them mm. were in some kind of a situation. Uh -huh. what, what do you see for yourself as, as a painter now? Uh, what do you see the, uh, for yourself in the near future in terms of your own work? Well, this is one of the first ends of the year that I don't have a lot of planned shows. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I'll, uh, I'll paint right away again as fast as I have this fall. Mm. Um, I'm very interested in uh, my collaborative art program. I see. I'm the director this year of that, and it's very time consuming. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a wonderful educational tool. It matches an adult artist with a school age artist, oh, K through 12. Great. And the 
the now, student. Now, this is at Montgomery County, this Maryland. Montgomery County Art Association sponsors uh -huh. this. I see. And it's well received by the county, and we get grants from the Arts Council, and um, That's good. the county executives are very interested in it. Mm -hmm. But it has wonderful teaching advantages. The student gets the advantage of working with an experienced artist in mm -hmm. their studio if they want, with all kinds of medium. I don't, I don't restrict it. Mm -hmm. Some are three days, mm -hmm. you know, all all right. different medium, and um, the I did it with my grandson last uh, year, and what it brings to the adult is the spontaneity and the vision that a child has. Mm -hmm. It's just. So stimulating, yeah. so and it so loosened up my work. So it's, yeah, because it's good wonderful. for both the adult and the youngster, isn't it? There's I really an interaction there. I recommend doing this. Yeah. It's just Bec great. Because uh, I've uh, talked to a lot of teachers, and I have been a teacher myself, and I have found that uh, not only do the students learn from you, but sometimes you learn from the students. More. I always get more than I give, mm -hmm. always. That's great. Well. Uh, you, you know, Mitzi, I want to thank you for being with us and showing us what you do and discussing your work. And I want to thank you very much for that. Well, I'm more than pleased to yes. do it. And uh, for our viewers, this is Alan Avery for Art Strokes. I want to thank you for watching. And in addition, we do uh, are rather found on the web, www.arrows.com slash A-E-V-R-Y. Thank you for watching again. And what they'll do is they'll check the end. Of